Okay, great. Welcome back. So the last time we talked a little bit about the TCP handshake, and in this video we're talking about TCP's congestion control mechanism. So in the last video I told you that one of the major things TCP gives us is reliable transport, meaning all the data that I sent to Google will get there, or I'll know that it didn't get there, or or you know all the data that Google sends to me gets to me, or Google knows that it hasn't gotten to me yet. And I told you the second big thing we're going to talk about with TCP is congestion control. And congestion control is a mechanism that TCP uses to try and maximally utilize the bandwidth, you know, the bytes per second, the throughput of our connection speed. And it does so in a way that I think some people find kind of unintuitive at first, but is really interesting. And it involves three kind of sections in a state machine. So a TCP connection can either be in slow start mode, congestion avoidance mode, or it can be in a fast retransmit mode. And this mode you know, happens very briefly. Most of the time you're either in slow start or you're in congestion avoidance. And you can kind of bounce back and forth between those states. So why does TCP do this? TCP tries to utilize the the infrastructure of the network in a way that is good for everyone. So we get the maximum speed that we possibly can while not just flooding the traffic and causing everybody else to you know, experience slow speeds because our traffic is dominating the, the network. So this is unlike UDP and some other transport layer protocols. TCP tries to maximally utilize the resources available you know, for physical infrastructure. And what this looks like in practice is every time you start up a TCP connection, you know, you do the handshake and then you start transmitting actual bytes of data and you start here in slow start. And so let's say I'm in slow start mode. I start at one maximum segment size, which is, you know, part of the handshake figuring out how much the maximum segment size should be. But basically I can say one packet at a time. Okay while I'm at the start of slow start. So I send my first packet to Google of data. And when Google gets my data, they acknowledge that they received my packet. So I'm sending packet one, they acknowledge packet one. Now, when I receive this, I can send one more packet at a time. Okay, cool. So then I can send two unacknowledged packets at a time. And then let's say these two come back and everything's good, hunky-dory, no data drops. Then I get a plus one maximum segment size for each of these two packets that come back as well. So, you know, I sent packet two and packet three. They acknowledged packet two and acknowledged packet three. Now I can send two more. I was sending two, now I can send four. So, you know, let's say I send four out, two, three, four, and those four come back, one, two, three, four, then I'd get, you know, four more plus ones, whoops, <laughs> plus one, and now I can send eight. So this is exponential growth. First I sent one, then two, then four, then eight, then 16, then 32. So, you know, this is just the two to the n exponential function during slow start. Okay, so I work like this. And I do this until one of two things happens. The first thing that can happen is, you know, a bad thing. Let's say one of these packets gets dropped. And I receive, you know, a timeout. I sent a packet. It never came, an, an acknowledgement for it never came back. And I timeout. In that case, I restart slow start. And you know, I start again from scratch, and I lower a value, which was set during the handshake, something called the slow start threshold. Okay, so I should draw that on here. Say so this line was our slow start threshold. If we drop a packet like this before we reached the slow start threshold, which is some value in terms of bytes per second that was established during the handshake, you can read the RFC for those exact calculations if you like. But if we drop a packet before that, we lower the threshold. 
and then start slow start over again. So we'd lower it and then we'd start again from here. The speed would drop like this. This is in the case that we lost a packet and our new slow start threshold you know, is somewhere lower and we'd try to do slow start until we got to that moment. See? In the other case, everything goes good, right? And we reach the slow start threshold. Then we back off a little bit. We were doing exponential, you know, two to the n, one segment size, two segment sizes, four segment sizes, eight segment sizes, so on. We're going to slow down now to avoid congesting the network. You know, if we just exponentially increased our speed always, we're surely going to be putting too much traffic on the line. So what happens after we reach slow start or after we reach the slow start threshold? Let's erase some of this. I'll just erase the whole lines. After we reach the slow start threshold, we start, so let's say I was at, you know, eight maximum segment sizes per unacknowledged time. So I can send eight unacknowledged packets out at once. That's my bytes per second value. Let's say that was my slow start threshold. Now, when I send out the next packet of data and my current value is eight maximum segment sizes, when that packet of data gets acknowledged, my speed increases by one over the current number, one over eight maximum segment sizes. So if I had sent eight packets out and all eight of them come back, then all eight of them add up to one. So if this was you know, times eight, this was times eight, then this is one eight times eight, which is eight eighths and I get plus one. So after sending out eight packets and receiving eight acknowledgements back, now in the next round, I can send out nine. Okay, so I probably should have switched to another color. This is congestion avoidance. And so it looks exponential during slow start, and then it starts to look linear after that. Okay, then you know, will always increase until a packet is dropped. So let's say finally down here, I'm at, you know, nine maximum segment sizes and I send a packet out and it drops. There are two kinds of dropped packets in TCP and there's different ways to detect them. I'm not gonna get into the, the details of that in this video, but if I receive a timeout, it's considered a major packet loss, and it's a sign that something is really changed about our network situation. Somewhere along our path to google.com, a router's become totally flooded and, and can't communicate anymore. Or I can receive three duplicate acknowledgements, and that's called a minor packet loss situation. And a duplicate, duplicate act happens when, say, I send this packet out, let's say that's packet number 12, and I sent two other packets out, let's say three other packets out, 13, 14, and 15. If these packets arrive at Google and they all acknowledge and those acknowledgements arrive at me, they'll all have enough information in them to indicate that packet 12 never arrived at Google. So these three will all acknowledge 12 saying, Hey, or rather they'll, technically they'll acknowledge 11. No, they'll, they'll acknowledge 12, sorry. They'll acknowledge 12 saying, hey, 12 is the packet that we expect to come back. And you know, the sequence numbers are, sequence and acknowledgement numbers are a little special. You should read the resources I link below to figure out, you know, they don't actually just say which packet is sent out. They say which byte of data they're waiting on. It's a little too much for this video. But so I can send out four packets. If one of them drops and three of them come back and acknowledge, I'll receive an acknowledgement number that indicates we, we Google are still waiting on packet 12. 
And they won't indicate necessarily to us that they've received 13, 14, and 15, but because we're still receiving data, the connection isn't totally clogged. Okay, so for that type of packet loss, minor packet loss, duplicate acknowledgements, you end up in the fast retransmit state. And for major packet loss, I, this dropped, we never heard anything about any of these other packets. You know, we just heard radio silence. We sent a packet out and it never got acknowledged and we waited and waited and waited. Nothing ever happened. That's called major packet loss. And that'll take you back to slow start. So if we receive major packet loss, then it just looks like our connection speed looks like, oh, we had a major packet loss, we'll start over. And then we'll plateau again from there, okay? And if we receive minor packet loss, we enter the fast retransmit stage. And that says, hey, we got three duplicate acknowledgements indicating that packet 12 was missing. Right, I can put that back on there. We got three miss, 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 okay. These three packets all arrived. They all got acknowledged. Or at least, you know, they sent an acknowledging packet out, but indicating that, hey, we're still missing packet 12. Then in fast retransmit, I'll say, okay, hold up, let's stop sending anything else. Let's just see if packet 12 retransmit packet 12, try and get there. And if it does, if I get back an acknowledgement that indicates that 12 has been received, which will also indicate that, you know, 13, 14, and 15 have been received, acknowledge 15, then I'll go back into congestion avoidance. If in fast retransmit, for some reason, this packet drops either on the way back, the acknowledgement drops, or if the packet drops on the way there, I'll go back into slow start just like before. Okay, so this is what happens to the connection speed over time when I go back to slow start. And if I do fast retransmit, then really what happens is I, I basically just continue to grow. I reduce my speed a little bit and then I continue to grow. Okay. So all of these mechanisms are just to help utilize bandwidth to the maximum degree that the connection can handle. And we're always probing to find out if there's more bandwidth available. You know, TCP connections never aim to just stop and plateau in a flat line where they're not growing anymore. Because if we do this, we can't know if we're maximally using the bandwidth that's available. So we always try and push the limits until we reach a moment where a packet drops and then we go, okay, I'll slow down. And then we try and push the limits until we have to slow down. So that's TCP congestion control.